welcome to Creative Block. We're your host, Jean. And V, we interview people in the animation industry about their life, work, and hobbies while we doodle jam. We ask people on Twitter if they had specific specific topics they want us to discuss as well as some drawing prompts and today with us we have Cheyenne Curtis hey hi hi I've said that a million times and I don't know why that, that, that time. <laughs> it's the burrito it's the it's burrito your- I just had I'm burrito <laughs> drunk hi Cheyenne <laughs> hi <laughs> you know you two have really nice radio voices I gotta say I mean, we keep hearing that a lot that's, yeah. that's really nice of you to say. It's, I feel like I Jean really does. I feel like for me, I need a better mic and then I'll have the DJ voice. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the mic is a lot to do with it. And and uh, you just got to know, you got to know how to use it. You got to get real close to it. Well, you, yeah, you have, you have the voice that what's it called? Like the vocal fry, whatever. The vocal fry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's you, you do enough voice acting and stuff and you just kind of know how to how to speak into a mic to make it sound. Oh, my make God. It sound real nice and nice and relaxing. Hey, Cheyenne. Uh, oh. Tell us, tell us who you are and what you I do. I hate this. You have to stop this. <laughs> okay, tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, hi, I'm Cheyenne Curtis. I'm a um, storyboard supervisor and character designer. I've uh, been working in the industry for about like eight, nine-ish years, I think. Uh, moved here from Montreal, right to LA, uh, to work in this amazing industry, and. Um, I've been pitching a lot of shows. I do that. And let's see what else that you haven't said yet. Yeah, I just, I've worked at, you know, all the major TV studios. I haven't worked in feature before. I'm more of like a TV kind of gal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's my uh, whole life. That was, that was great. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's it. <laughs> uh, do you, do you want to, like, are you interested in um, working in feature? I don't know. I've it's hard to say because I've never done it, and like I only have like a handful of friends that have worked in feature, and it seems really cool, like really cool parties and perks and stuff. Um, mm. But I like the the fast pace of TV. I I like that it's like go 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 get your stories out there, and things end up yeah. on TV that like you like and you don't like, and it's out there. And um, I don't know. I don't know if I'd have the patience to work in feature. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's a different yeah. beast I, for sure. Mm-hmm. It's um, relatable. <laughs> Let's take it back to little Cheyenne and tell us kind of how you got your start uh, with art and getting into animation and all that good stuff. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, little baby me drew a lot, watched a lot of cartoons, uh, like most young artists. And I wasn't really good at anything else, you know, like I'd always be like really bad at math and science and everything in school, but like art wise they i'd be like oh look like my art's on the wall again yay Mm -hmm. (laughs) so um you know that kind of gave me some like perspective on being like okay like like i'm good at one thing uh not so good at school but this is something um and then i went to in in canada it's like we have high school Mm -hmm. not in canada in montreal specifically we have like high Mm -hmm. school and then cgep for two years after high school before you go to university which is like it's cool like you get to kind of like for two years two three years like explore and like figure out what you want to do so i went into like art like an art program that taught me like flash and photoshop and um, did like a lot of like life drawing and stuff. And I was like, Oh my God, I really like this. And then I went to university for fine art and I hated it and I was miserable and I really wanted to drop out. But school, school in Canada is like Mm -hmm. much cheaper (laughs) than it is in the U S. So it wasn't like, Oh my God, I spent $90,000 on school. It was, (laughs) it was a little (laughs) less like intense, but I was like, Oh no, I hate art I hate doing this like there's something wrong with me I should be really happy um and then some of my friends went to Sheridan which is like they some went to like illustration some went to animation um so the teach the some of the teachers at my university who knew I was kind of like dropping out of classes and not showing up they were like what's going on with you and I kind of explained like I don't know what I'm doing here and they're like well like you're very commercial (laughs) They're like the way you draw, oh, <laughs> which is like, yeah, oh, they're like, you're not very uh-huh. like fine artsy, you're more commercial artist. Um, like, have you considered going to Sheridan? And so all these kinds of like signs were pointing to like, maybe explore Sheridan, even though it was in a different province than where I lived. 
Um, so I saw like the two portfolio requirements, like one for illustration portfolio, one for animation. And the illustration one was like, oh, like draw like an upside down perspective of this like room and what your feelings are. And I was just like, Ugh. and then I saw the animation one and it was like, draw this cartoon cat. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> that I can do. I was like, this seems fun. Um, Cause I didn't even know about animation or like wanting to get into it. So I did the animation portfolio and I got into Sheridan, which was like crazy. And that's kind of like where my life like really changed and where I really knew like, oh, okay, like this, I want to be in animation. I want to work in LA. I want to work in TV. Um, So that was a really cool experience. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of figured it out during college. That's really interesting um, because this is actually not something that we hear a lot. Um, And it must have been like really heartbreaking when you went to like fine art. Yeah, and like that moment of like, oh, like, because that's true. I think there's like a lot of kids that love drawing and they don't really know that making cartoons can be a career or like, like, because art usually is kind of thought of as like, fine art I guess yeah. uh so like painting and stuff mm-hmm. would um was it would you say that like fine art school you went to was it kind of like more like a community college or was it more like um is Sheridan a private school by the way how um uh, what's yeah. kind of like Sheridan I think so yeah it's like a specialized school that you pay for um like it costs a little more than school in, mm. in Montreal did um Montreal I went to like university so I was getting like a bachelor of fine arts Oh, nice. Um, but I was like, why? <laughs> like, I hate yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then for, Sher- <laughs> for Sheridan, it was four years to get a Bachelor of uh, Applied Arts Animation. I see. Um, yeah. So, and then I needed to get a Bachelor to get a visa to come to the U.S., yeah, that's kind of what I was kind of like thinking about when you mentioned the like the bachelor's. I was like, oh, nice. Or the visa. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the show, the bachelor. About the visa. I know. I'm always kind of like on the, the lookout visa. for that. But like, um, Shay and I like relate on that. <laughs> on that oh, aspect. yeah. Oh, yes. It's tough. But did you know at the time, did you know like that you were going to, um, was your goal going to be like to move to the US? Or were you just kind of thinking like, oh, there's like, a pretty strong industry in Canada as well. Uh, um, where, where, what was, where was your kind of like goal um, um, at the time? Yeah, I think, I think I really, I didn't think I was going to be a storyboard artist when I was in Sheridan because I was like, I am not good enough. Like mm. I could never, those are for like the geniuses. And mm. so, and I, I also just yeah. gravitated <laughs> towards characters. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's kind of what they were like teaching us. Like only the best of the best are artists. It's like, don't you wild. even think that you could do this? Um, so I was like, yeah, like I love characters. You know, like I love drawing like girls over and over again. Like I should be a character designer. Right. So um, kind of talking to other people in, Toronto at the time and like the studios that they were have like the studios they have there it was more of like oh we do animation like if you want to be an animator stay in Canada if you want to do character design you have to go to the US um and I really wanted to work at like Nickelodeon that was like my dream studio was like oh it has to be Nickelodeon um Mm -hmm. so uh, for my fourth year, like my, my in third year, you get to do an internship and everyone was doing these like super cool, crazy internships. And I did like a pretty cool one in Montreal, but it was more of like this like indie studio. And I just, you know, saved a lot of money staying with my parents and doing that. Um, but in fourth year, Nickelodeon came to our school for the first time ever, which was like a really big mm. deal. And they were like, yeah, like we want interns. Um, so like come pitch us like your shows and you know, come interview with us. So I did that. I interviewed and I was supposed to be on back when they had Kung Fu Panda at Nickelodeon. Remember mm-hmm. those days? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I was interviewing for Kung Fu Panda and I didn't get it, but they were like, you know, we really like you. We like your energy. And so we're going to put you in like HR recruitment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, okay, <laughs> whatever. Uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that was, it, that was weird. It was a, it was a cool experience. It was just weird to like be calling people, telling them like they didn't get the job oh, or like God. take your portfolio. But it was just like, yeah, it was strange stuff. Well, I was trying to get a work and get a job. Um, so I did that internship, which is like my first big LA experience ever. Um, 
And then I moved after that internship, I went back home for a year trying to break into the industry, like really trying to break into getting into back to LA. Um, and that was really, really hard. And I almost gave up and quit. <laughs> During that year, um, were you, what was kind of like your schedule like, or kind of what was the, like, uh, the, the goals you set to yourself, um, artistically, or also like, um, did you have like maybe, um, uh, a day job that you went to, or were you like focused entirely on art? Kind of, how did that look like? Um, I, it was a lot of applying to, a lot of doing tests, like a lot, a lot, a lot of tests, um, and mm -hmm. never hearing back. This was like, again, like eight years ago, like they really weren't really giving out visas. And I think yeah. testing was yeah. like a little more like the wild west, <laughs> Right. where it was yeah. like, sure, we'll send out like 500 tests, like whatever. Um, yeah. so I was doing that. And then like, I, luckily I, um, me and Darren Nefsi were kind of like blogger friends and like oh, pen pals. Yeah. And I was like writing to her being like, oh my God, like I love your style. I really want to break into the industry. Like, can you give me advice? And she got her pilot at Disney, um, like for Star Versus. And she was like, hey, do you want to do some like freelance for me? So that was kind of, I was just starting to do freelance for Disney at that time um, for the pilot. Mm. And did that for about a year and then um and then i got a job my first official job in the u.s was working at six point harness um so they brought me over and the pay was super low but i was like you know what they're getting me a visa whatever <laughs> <laughs> like and it was uh, a tn visa at the time uh -huh. back when those still were a thing and yeah so that was like my first job was working at like the six point harness, which was kind of cool. Cause you know, I got to do a lot of different things and wear a lot of different hats. And then like in five months when I was there, that's when star got greenlit oh, nice. and they were like, Hey, come on over as like a full-time character designer. Yes. And so my first like big studio job was Disney for star versus. Um, and that was just, I just got so lucky that like Darren was so open to like, taking me that was so green you know that's so great though oh um, my gosh that's awesome that's yeah. also a thing that you mentioned right like the first thing that like when you got your first internship and they're like we love your personality and your energy and I'm sure like Darren must have felt that when you guys were kind of like um uh, being like pen pals and stuff so uh I think I think that's like really important you know like personality in like lending yeah. bags and stuff because it's like you know it's a t it's teamwork so you just got to be a good person, first and foremost. <laughs> got to be a, a pleasant person. Yeah. yeah. Not everyone gets the memo, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, it does help. Mm. That is so cool. And so how long were you on Star? Um, for the whole first season. Um, and yeah, it was just such a amazing, life-changing experience. And then because of like the way the visa works, you know, it's like you can't, not be working and star was going on hiatus so i needed to immediately get another job and i couldn't wait for yeah. the season two pickup mm -hmm. um and so that was hard that was like being like okay like either i just like disney has to get me another job or i have to like go to a different studio um so i went to like dreamworks for a hot second <laughs> then over to cartoon network and then like by that time, you know, Star had already got picked up for a second season and I couldn't hop over. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I would have loved to have stayed on the show, honestly. Like, the the downside, I think, of this whole visa thing is, like, I've only worked on first seasons. Like, I've never got to stay on a show oh, right. for more than one season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it sucks. Like, I, I want to, like, be with the characters and watch them grow and um and at the time the visa that i had i wasn't allowed to do freelance either for other studios than the one i was at so oh. it's not like i could have like now it's different for me like i have like a oh one visa and i could mm -hmm. you know work for multiple shows which is really great and like i just it was hard because i felt like i was so grateful for the visa and getting to work in the u.s but i also felt like really stifled and yeah. i felt like mm -hmm. like it was like this is so unfair like i, I would be further along in my career if I was able to like work on multiple shows instead of just like one show a year. I think it's something that, so yeah, that, yeah, I yeah. really agree with what you're saying. I think it's something that we haven't really, we've kind of touched on lightly with like Tony Ko's episode, but it yeah. is like, 
you you're very when you're on a visa uh it's cool because you get to be in the u.s and work on like american shows that are like really high quality um but at the same time the visa kind of like obstructs like a lot of your freedom because you can't yeah you can't yes. freelance i've had studios reach out to me and i had to be like i'm on a visa i don't think this can work out unfortunately and like a lot of opportunities fall through because you're you're tied to the studio that got you the visa so you're basically kind of like chained yeah. to so you kind of have a lot of like yeah you can only work for the studio you're currently employed at um and if they let you go in any aspect it doesn't have that they let you it can be just because the season is ending you have 60 days to find like a new right. gig uh so it's very it's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. um to always just kind of and 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 you know also that when you're like taking interviews that it's kind of like it's not that it's not like a target but it's like people are going to be less likely to hire you if you're not like yeah. exceptional because it's a pain in the ass to do all the paperwork <laughs> so yeah yeah it's kind of yeah, it really yeah it's kind of like uh it's hard but you know it's like it's kind of that thing right it's like um the way that i kind of think about it, it's kind of like in shonen anime when like you're like with the like uh you know you have like the what's it like you know like the metal wristband or whatever and you're yeah. like uh like finally when you like the dropping the weights yeah yeah when, <laughs> um you're because because you're working on that right now um Shai, right like are you still on the visa right now uh yeah, I actually just, uh, I think, when was it? In 2019, I signed mm -hmm. with the Gotham Group because um, yeah. I really wanted to get an agent yes. a sponsored visa because I was really, really sick yeah. of being kind of, I don't know, like you, you get treated a certain way with a visa at certain studios. Yeah. So I was really sick of it and I really wanted yeah. my like life back and like control back over myself. Um, so it caught, it, it did. Like, thank God I had saved up, like, for an emergency because, like, yeah. it did cost, like, around 10 grand. Like, wow. to get, like, yeah, to get my own visa. Um, but the freedom has been great. And I feel like, like, being able to take breaks and not need to work, like, consistently yeah. and always feel like I'm going to get deported, yeah. like, just to have that, like, gone. Like, I just, I, like, my, I just feel better. Like, I f I'm happier. I feel more sane. Um, God, yeah. So it was definitely worth it. Uh, that's a, that's but, a staggering amount for me. But I, I, I like. I think it's a good reminder to anybody that's like born in America that uh, you know you you're that much closer to being able to work in the industry. And for anybody that's like trying to get in and from a different country, it's like well, it, it's ten thousand. It really, times yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah. so, because like, you have to really make yeah. it worth their money. Because the studio will be the one like applying for your visa at the beginning. Yeah. But if you if you want that freedom, uh, that's kind of like what how I called it with like uh, like with one of my friends who we were kind of calling it like the golden chains. It's like they pay for your visa, but you're tied to the studio. So if you want to mm -hmm. buy your freedom, it's a hefty amount of money. Like for the yeah. green card, I also had to pay something between fifteen, mm -hmm. like between fifteen to twenty yeah. grand. That's like a lot of yeah. is that just legal fees or what yes is that? attorney attorney and legal like uh wow. you have you do have to pay a bunch of like even just even if you didn't have an attorney like it is like a bunch of money it's like at least like a couple grands for the, just the paperwork That's yeah crazy. yeah because like you want a good lawyer to do it right <laughs> sure sure yeah. oh yeah 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 i mean that makes sense but that yeah i don't know it's just it's fascinating to me because i i think uh, everyone I know that ha that came from a different country that's working here, it's just like this extra layer of stress. You can't even like be vocal about things. Like I, I've yeah. had friends who wanted to like voice their opinion on, you know, sociopolitical movements and they couldn't mm, just because yeah. it's like not their country. Yep. And it's like, yep. yeah, but you're here, <laughs> you know, you still have to deal with it. So you, you are, but you're, you're technically like, like you're not considered like, like is this you're not a citizen so no, you're yeah. just like expendable and so if you do anything that's like slightly disruptive you know like you're paying they, taxes you're, right like you're paying american yeah. taxes you yeah, are that's, that's no but uh, like cheyenne like you pay american taxes right yeah but i don't get to go on unemployment 
Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. fine. But I feel like if you're paying taxes, you should be allowed to speak your opinion. I don't know. Whatever. You think, right? Issue. I don't yeah. know. It's it's risky. I'd rather not. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't even want to play with like that yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of fire. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. hard. Yeah. It's hard. It, yeah, it's um. Anyway, visa stuff. It's a lot of fun, but I'm glad that you got got them. Like, how did you kind of reach out to them? How was it? Um, how was the um, process yeah, that like? Was... That was interesting because um, I reached out to the cartel, um, which is like another big animation um, agency, and Gotham kind of at the same time, just being like, here's my resume, uh, this is my situation, I pitch show, like just really pimping myself out to like a ridiculous right. level, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> being like, you should, you need me. No, I didn't say that, but <laughs> I was like, you should have me. <laughs> so like I luckily got interviews with both of the agencies and um, they were both amazing. It was really cool that I got to kind of choose between either one. And I went with the Gotham group just because like, I think like they just had a, a slightly better handle in my opinion on the I visa see. stuff. Yeah. Um, and that was like literally the only not, I mean, they were great also, but like I, I loved cartel. I think they were like super friendly and awesome. Um, I was just trying to look out for like, the, visa. you know, yeah. The logistics, yeah. the visa stuff was just, like, number one important. And they kind of had, like, a lawyer set up in there. I was like, okay, like, I'm just going to go with them. Like, I feel safest there. Um, and, yeah, like, they, they take 10% of every paycheck you make. But they also, like, do all the <laughs> dirty work. And, and they, they, like, you know, like, anything to do with, like, money or anything else they take care of. And because that, that was always, like, kind of a weird spot for me was like negotiating my own pay and now they handle it and they're kind of like the bulldogs that do that which is nice um and like you know they're always gonna try and get you like the best deal and then whenever i have like a show pitch like they will either like give me notes or help me like shape it and then we'll send it out for me and they also look for work for me like the newest job that i have i got Mm because of them um which was really cool. Like I just, I never even like heard of the opportunity and then it came up and I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> so they've been like, I, I really enjoy having them. Like, I know it's kind of been like a hot debate of like, do I, for some artists being like, do I need one? Do I not need one? Um, but yeah, I, uh, I've, I've I'll, been I'll just it. like <laughs> chime in really I mean, fast. Yeah, because it's up to you, right? I also have an agent, something that people don't really talk about a lot actually and i it's funny because i i'm with the, the cartel so the other one that you mentioned and it is actually really really great i uh, it is like you know a lot of people are like 10 percent. it's so much but like for me i'm like wow i never have to look for a job ever again <laughs> it's the best it's so great like i it's nice yeah. it's, it's nice to have it feels like like mom and dad are like yeah yeah you know, watch it out for you. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, I don't have to stress over this stuff. And like, you know, like, you know, that you're going to have, um, you know, but yeah, that you're, you're going to have like choices actually, because you have someone that's like yeah. really uh, working for you about that. Cause yeah, that's true. Cause like they only get paid when like you get paid. Right. Um, and then right. I think, yeah. And I think what was like my biggest, push for getting an agent was like 2019 was just a really bad year for me all around uh and I was kind of like at my wits end of being treated a certain way um and I know like my other friends who had agents would like any time like something would come up with like their pitch or an exec they would just call their agent and be like hey I'm mad about this thing this like yeah yeah, like this happened to me like could you go talk to them like go talk to the executives yeah, and like, cause like the executives and the agents have like a whole different yes. type of relationship. Yes. That is that so like- very true, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I that was also one of the big reasons why I reached out to an agent was the, like I was getting pretty far along in the pitch with the producer, but I could see that you know there's a moment because when you're new, like that's kind of like the hardest thing is like when you haven't ever, even though you have like X amount of years in the industry, if you haven't ever like got a show greenlit, they're not gonna. They don't have a lot of incentive to take you seriously, unfortunately. Like if you're like, if you're kind of in their shoe, they're like, ah, that person's kind of like, like they're kind of looking at you like, uh, and they're like, "Mm, do you know what you're doing kind of thing? And unless you have like a really, really strong personality, (laughs) unless you're like also a car salesman, (laughs) 
<laughs> like it's really yeah. hard yeah. to win them over and having an agent oh my god it really helps because it's like they do that yeah. they are basically your confidence i don't know for me that was like what really helped me because i was also like and also like you said it's like you can ask them like all, all the questions like i don't like what kind of how do i approach this problem or like i think i have this problem and like they kind of give you a reality check too it's like ah oh, and because they have so many clients too they've been in these like these situations mm -hmm. for them are like a walk in the park they've been in those situations like a million times so yeah. they're like oh yeah to give you all the business savvy details. <laughs> totally. Yeah, they do help there. And like another perk that I never realized was like, um, when, when I, I have my pilot over at Disney right now and they paired me with another Gotham writer who's also just like an amazing woman who I already knew, you know, beforehand. But because we were both at Gotham, it like it just makes everything a lot easier, you know, like because right. like, yeah. they're, they're going to be making our deals and they're going to be signing everything. So like, I'm not in competition. You know what I mean? It's not like, yes. like me versus the writer. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, together, like we're in this because we're both sponsored by the same agent. Right. Um, yeah. Which is like a really cool feeling also. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting angle. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I've personally, like I've always been lured by the, the whole agent thing, but anytime I like get close to being like, should I do this? Like something usually works out for me. And then I'm like, eh, I'll, I'll just, I'll just keep winging it. <laughs> and it's like, but I, but it sounds so good. And, and like, and the older I get, the more I also value that sort of, um, being able to delegate like help uh -huh. to somebody else, you know, cause it's like, you're saying like, yeah, you, you pay a little bit, but then it's less stress. Like that's usually how it goes. That's right. why people get yeah. assistance uh -huh. too. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like if if the burden is becoming too big for you, then like maybe it's worth the ten percent or whatever it is. Um, so I get that. I think it, especially in your situation with the green car and everything, like yeah, there's yeah. Just too much. I think like for us, just getting work is like so yeah. important to us, like legally staying here. Yeah. So having like a person to be like, yes, I will always find you work somehow. Yeah. Being like, okay, phew, I could just live my life. <laughs> And also someone that's there to like champion you and to be like, you know what, you've been doing this job for like X amount of time, you deserve a step up, you know, and they're like, yep. and you're going to look up, look for jobs that are a step up from your current job. Yeah. And like that's so many connections too. That's, that's a big thing that I realized because when I was in France, the industry is really small. So in like maybe a couple of years, you know, all the studios, you've probably talked to everyone, but here people are like, it changes fast. It changes all the time. <laughs> yeah really. and keeping up with that is i think is a lot of work it's really a lot of work yeah. keeping up with all the all of what's going on um but yeah so that's so cool i'm so glad that you got i'm so glad you got rep that's so cool thanks and yeah how, how long have you been uh so so you were saying that you you started working with them and kind of uh what has been your career like recently you were talking about pitching with um disney um yeah so what's it called yeah since i've gotten the the agents um i've gotten my first like storyboard supervising role which i'm doing now awesome. um yeah. on a unannounced show um, <laughs> and that's been yeah and that's been really really awesome i, I really love like unannounced show <laughs> one day it'll be announced um right. and they helped me get when uh what was it in 2020 i or 2019 towards the end of it i got my i was like working in development at disney while developing my own thing and helping other people with their development projects um mm -hmm. and they helped kind of get that so my project still is in development there even though i i left um which is cool but, you know, development takes, like, minimum three years uh -huh. to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but, yeah, those are kind of, like, the two big – my my main things is just that pilot and uh, my main job. And um, just doing, like, car character design freelance on the side. That's usually – or, like, storyboard here and there. Um, but, yeah. That's kind of my, my main stuff. What's uh, storyboard supervising like? Can you like describe the job a little bit? Uh, yeah, it's for um, kind of like a bridge-esque show. Um, and 
it's cool. Like I have three board artists and one revisionist, I think starting soon. Um, and I got like my like coordinator and uh, I don't know, it's, I definitely like drawing a lot less, but I really like kind of like the managerial aspect of it and like checking in on the boards and making sure everything is like mm-hmm. everyone's okay. And I haven't gotten into like animatic phase yet or anything. Um, like it's still pretty mm-hmm. recent, the job, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool kind of like juggling three episodes at once instead of like just drawing one episode yeah. um, and doing, you know what I mean? Like compared to normal storyboarding. Um uh, yeah, I don't know. I've just been really enjoying yeah. being a manager. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's really fun. I, th- I think at a certain point, we all kind of reach that <laughs> moment of like, I don't want to draw anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, just like, so tired of drawing. <laughs> you just you do it for X amount of years, and it's just like, man, can I just like manage some people? Can I, can I just like write some notes? Because I think all three of us are in that position now, and it's like... I feel like for me, it's more like... It's, I love drawing. I really, I really love drawing. It's just yeah. like, there's a moment when you learn so much, you know, when you've done the same job for like 10 years, you're like, Hmm, I, I know most of this. I know like a lot of this. So if I keep doing this job, um, I'm not going to learn as much. I'm not going to grow as much. I think it's kind of mm-hmm. like the point of view, how I see, like, if you step up to like being a manager, then you have all the like person that people uh, aspect to learn. And that's a lot of fun. I don't know from, I, I value like learning things a lot and like growing. Cause I feel like it's really easy to get like stale. I feel like if you, if you're not in a position of learning, it's easy to get jaded too, or like, yeah. you know, that's true. I think in that sense, it's, it's, yeah, it's more in that sense that I think it's like exciting to. Yeah, it is. It's been really, um, a different brain that I've been like <laughs> using yeah. and like I do think like because I'm still really interested in like show development and pitching I do think like for the execs it's nice for them to be like oh cool she's like done this before yes. in like a smaller much smaller scale but like she's managed people she's organized like people trust her so yeah. I think that that helps <laughs> it does help 100% yes very true that's really cool yeah sure Showrunning is like doing, uh, supervising and directing on a scale times like a hundred. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I, can't I don't, imagine. I don't think people fully understand how much work it really is and how much like people managing it is. It's honestly, it's a lot more than, than having. Yeah. After, that. after like directing and stuff, I'm like, Ooh, showrunning sounds really scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough. it's yeah. like scary in a good sense right but it is pretty scary like because you're in a bunch of meetings all the time you have to know what you're doing or at least pretend that you do um and you have to yeah. make like decisions <laughs> on the fly all the time you can't second guess yourself uh you have to like i don't know i'm like wow that's that's like like <laughs> awesome like massive impressive skills right <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I like it's almost been like, yeah, me being like, hmm, like, is that something I want to do? You know, like in the long run in the future? Like, I love, like, I wish I could just like pitch shows and sell them and then just like have somebody else run to them. Be, and, to be fair. <laughs> and I just give like that's feedback. A, but that's a, that's a thing. That's something that I've like kind of been like thinking about to some extent because I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I love making comics and I feel like I find a lot of my ideas while I do them. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, if you're like, want to show run a show, like, I don't know, Steven Universe, like Amphibia, where like all the seasons are like serialized and planned out. It's, I don't know. It's like a lot of like, for, of like planning, of like thinking ahead. And I'm like, wow, that's, I don't know, impressive. <laughs> it really is. Tell me, tell us about uh, what kind of stuff do you feel like is the biggest influence on your work? Like what kind of, what inspires you? Not just in animation or art necessarily, like anything. Yeah, so that's a really good question. I think my influences like over the past few years have been a lot of like um, indie comics and like, find, like, I, like I grew up in Montreal. So a lot of like, we got a lot of access to like Paris, like French stuff, like from France mm-hmm. and like England and, like I grew up reading like Tintin and like Asterix and Obelix and <laughs> all that. So um, I still think like I'm 
very influenced by like French comics and just like artists from around the world who like, I don't know, I really like the like really loose kind of like, um, like very energetic kind of drawings that like probably could never be animated. (laughs) But that's just been like my thing. Like, you know, um, Yoan Sfar. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna talk about yeah. like have you watched the uh, Rabbi's Cat? They made an animation, an animated movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks yeah, yeah. Good. It looks so cool. Yeah, like his comics have always been like a huge influence. So I think I'm always trying to find that in my own work, just like the like the energy and looseness and um like I don't know, I've been really liking that direction that I'm kind of going in because I think like a while ago I used to be very hung up on like making it like like so clean and like disney-ish and like mm-hmm. and and i don't know i just now i just like i love just drawings that are like look like chicken scratch <laughs> i agree i i really i really love that about your style because like you have i think also like drawing more loosely kind of helps find like really attractive attractive shapes and i think the way you draw like your character designs they have like really really strong shapes and they, they're they like a, a little bit between realistic and grounded but also like kind of cartoony i guess a little bit like exaggerated proportions it's really yeah. fun uh it's thanks yeah this pippy that yeah. you drew is like yeah 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 awesome like <laughs> oh my like God. the way the way you drew the <laughs> hair i was like oh, I <laughs> like I, saw, no. I was like oh this is the appealing shape right here and that's where this came from so like uh yeah, i love your little you know i like your pippy in the corner that kind of looks like calvin and Hobbes mm-hmm. a little bit yeah i don't know I was, i've never drawn pippy long slugging in my life so oh well, these are great for your first time ever first <laughs> attempts yeah but i yeah i think that the looseness helps with figuring out those more appealing shapes. I tend to be way too, I have the same, I have the, pr- the same problem you described where I want everything is clean, different, different way than like Disney, but mm-hmm. um, I can't seem to break free of it. So like, I mean, I love you know, your stuff, Gene. It's the new it's grounds. The new oh, grounds. <laughs> no, yeah, no it is. It's, flash. it's so like shiny. It's and perfect. Yeah. So, like, I'm like, ah, oh, how does he do that? <laughs> it's, it's because I came from flash and working in flash. And um, so it's like, I'm still, and that's still often what I use the most. And so, like, I think it, uh, it's just burned into me that vector sort of style. I can't get rid of it. So it's cool. I was gonna ask, like, what helps you break free of the cleanness? Is there like certain tools you like to use? Um, yeah, I think I draw the most loose on my iPad with mm-hmm. like Procreate. I use this I thing ask, called like, yeah. yeah, like it's this thing called like the Narinder pencil that I just like have been obsessed with. And I think it's because there's no thick or thin on it. Um, ah. It's, yeah, it's just like, it just is what it is. And that really helps me just kind of like jot everything down and not worry about like these like beautiful thick and thin lines. And yeah, I'll, um, and it's very thin and kind of like a light gray. So I don't know. It's just it kind of like unlocked something in my brain where I was I, like, oh I my God. <laughs> I really agree with that because I, I, you know, that's so funny. You mentioned that because I remember there was a time like 10 years ago and I was just like, I was stuck with drawing and like kind of, I, I started opening uh, MS paint. Uh, I don't know what it's called mm-hmm. now on Microsoft. Cause they don't, I guess just paint. I, yeah. What is it? Called? I don't know. It's kind of, yeah. it's sort of kind of gone, but um, I would use a one pixel uh, like pencil. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, the line is going to look crappy anyway. So all of a sudden you have all that pressure that is gone. Cause you're like, well, the tool, like you don't have the pressure from the tool. Kind of like, you know how, like sometimes when yeah. you open like a sketchbook, like I think I'm able to draw like much better drawings in those, like, you know, lined or like ruled composition books, because it's like, there's the lines and I'm like, well, this is a throwaway notebook. I can just draw whatever I want. Mm-hmm. So there's like, the pressure is already gone. And um, yep, and I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, just like what you were describing with that that brush that you're using on the iPad. It's like, well, that I'm not gonna like. I don't have to think about the line so hard, so I can just be free. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, it is that that freedom that I like. And then like sometimes like I'll go back to other pens and play around with that. And it's really fun. But um, I think for my 
sketching just using that pencil um and i don't know something about the ipad the way like i hold it compared to like being over a cintiq also just like yeah. really loosens me up yeah i mean it's like kind of like drawing with a sharpie right it's the same sort yeah. of it's like it's nice to not have to it, the limitation yeah. is nice because you're like well except that i feel like for a sharpie I, I, the limitation is different like the sharpie forces you to be like very okay. synthetic but with like like you got like very strong shapes and like a few lines but when you're drawing with like a very small tool you can just kind of um, be more like like chicken scratchy and like mm. kind of like build your shapes yeah. slowly by like you know doing like like thickening your lines or like that kind of stuff so it's like a different exercise i think but mm -hmm. similar idea yeah there's something to finding a good brush huh like i i there's this always this like yeah i don't know if it's stigma but people are always like does it matter what brush you use but it's like no it does like <laughs> sometimes it, it, it does it, yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes it does like sometimes you know even professionals just like find a good brush that they're like oh this hits right <laughs> like <laughs> this is this is freeing mm -hmm. me up or it's an interesting texture i've never discovered that but i hear it often enough that um it, it seems to actually matter, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, if someone was just like, you only get to use this brush and these colors for the rest of your life, I'd be like, great, perfect. Like, I love having, mm. like, very limited <laughs> yeah. options. Yeah. Limitations very true. Nice. Very true. I feel that way about vectors. And, and like, I, to me, like, even though Flash is, or I guess Animate now is a dog shit program, like, I, uh, I like... The limitations i know it well enough that i know what limitations there are and i know how to work within them and that is the canvas that i like the most because like there's better animation software there's better drawing software but i get overwhelmed like i i like when there's too many things i, c I could do i end up doing nothing so it's kind of tough on sort of on that note i'd love to ask what creative block feels like to you and how do you deal with it let's see i get it a lot <laughs> Okay, so how do I deal with creative block? Um, it definitely has been happening to me more frequently than I think it used to when I was like a lot younger and more like eager of an artist to like always be drawing and practicing and growing. And now, you know, I'm kind of like, ah, I want to go outside and like do things and live life. Like I don't yeah. want to be inside drawing all the time. Um, so I think it's like for me, it comes in these like waves of like for like a few weeks straight or like a month straight, I'll just be like drawing, drawing, drawing and like, you know, posting drawings and just like, I feel like I'm like on fire and then it'll like go away. And then I won't really draw for like weeks at a time or sometimes even longer than that. Or I feel like if I try drawing, I'm like, oh, I'm just drawing like a cute girl again. Like, what's the point? Um, and for a while, it used to like really, really scare me. And I'd feel a lot of like shame. And I was like, oh, I'm such a bad artist. Like I'm not drawing all the time. I don't feel creative. I don't feel good. And I just kind of started to like wait it out, you know, and just like, yeah. be like okay, like I'm not going to draw. I'm not going to force it. Like I'm just going to like read or go outside and just do anything else besides drawing. And it'll just come back. Like it'll either come back because I have to draw for work and <laughs> that'll just like you know, spark me to just kind of doodle on my own or I'll get inspired by like something I saw or read and it'll just come back. And that's kind of how my pattern's been for a while of like drawing a lot, then not, then drawing a lot, then not. <laughs> and just like Which embracing is probably, it. that's like healthy, right? Like I think we've been conditioned to think that we always need to be making stuff and I mean we've talked about it on the podcast before but like the idea of that the social media has imprinted in us that it's like you need to always be visible and it's like that's not really healthy <laughs> like it's it's probably better to take the time off when you need it honestly that's kind of funny that you mentioned social media and we were talking about agents earlier because I think this yeah. is like a realization and I don't know if you've had that too Cheyenne but I was like sometime around this year I was like hey, maybe I actually don't need to be that active on social media because I don't need social media anymore to find jobs. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 That's That's been kind of cool, at least for me to kind of slowly realize that. I don't know if that's kind of uh, changed anything for you in the way that you draw and post online. Um. Yeah, I think I've I totally get that feeling of being like, also, just social media has just been, like, really scary and weird, you know, for yeah. a bit. Oh, so yeah. I've 
definitely like taken a big seat, like a big step back. Um, and then like, we'll kind of only just post drawing sometimes. Um, but I mostly, I post them just to like feel like something yeah, <laughs> to yeah. be like, Oh, just to feel like, something. <laughs> I feel like people still like me, right? Mm-hmm. Like you still like my art, right? I'm, I'm still here. I'm like, gonna post a doodle, see if I get some hate now, <laughs> just to feel something. Just to feel anything. Um, yeah, it's it's been a mixture of that of being like, look, I'm still relevant, but like I have a website which you know I've been updating, so that kind of helps me feel like okay, oh, like okay. I have like a place to put all my art that I like the most that people can see and find. Like I don't need to be constantly updating social media with art like you can go see it there oh, um, what's your website uh it's just www.cheyennecurtis.com okay it's, yeah Let's give it a plug uh, you know while you're on here yeah hey my website that you can go check out um and so yeah like that's been nice to not have the the pressure like you said to be like oh i have to make sure people know i'm still alive mm-hmm. and still relevant to get work yep. mm-hmm. <laughs> um yeah. But it is nice to get that dopamine heat of like, I know, you know? I know. Yeah. We're weak. We're, we're only, we're only people. We're only <laughs> human. <laughs> yeah. Tell me yeah. I'm good. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yep. I need external validation. Yeah. We, I mean, as artists, I think like a lot, like a lot of what we do, we really I need agree. that. I agree. I feel like, yeah, I, I, so. I feel like, uh, yeah, it, I, I, I relate to what you're saying a lot because when I do, come up with a comic and people just don't really react to it then i'm like well do i really need to keep drawing the story <laughs> do people even like or like you care about these characters or whatever <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah i i wish i could detach my brain from that i've been i've been act, like actively trying to detach my brain from that because i haven't like put out any work quote unquote in a while and I'm working on stuff that is like purely mine. I, I even like tried pitching some of the stuff to some producers and immediately my brain was just like wincing and like shutting down from having to, to like present material after going mm-hmm. through development, which, uh, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Cheyenne knows both of both. Everyone here knows, um, how painful that is. And so it's like, and I, but I also, I'm kind of tired of having other people's responses ruin my, mm-hmm my love of making something Mm -hmm. and so like but it's tough it's tough to like get out of that mindset of like this this is just for me and if you like it great Mm -hmm. if you don't fuck off (laughs) like (laughs) that's it's a tough thing it's a tough place to get to um but i i think that you know i don't know i don't know where i'm going with that i just yeah i I think it's like the only moment that i feel like you could truly be free of that and i think that's kind of like similar to what you were describing uh shine like those moments of like you're on fire and you can draw so much is like that those moments of like sports of like creativity and like energy and those you can't control those so like when they come by you could just like really um like really ride the wave yeah. that's kind of how i started rodney honestly i didn't really think it through i was just like this is a funny drawing right. i'm just gonna write like some funny and now it's like i'm full thing yeah. and I have to like think it through and it's like actual work but you know it's like you I think like uh it's just about finding these moments of fun mm-hmm. and how like that turns into something else totally um, like I mean I love yeah. watching you two do your comics it's been so inspiring <laughs> it's really cool. I haven't done anything in a while <laughs> well it's still I, inspiring like, I I, st- I start things and then I get too ambitious and then I shut down because I I have a problem i don't know i, I i'm jealous of, well these uh these comics were were inspiration for me uh i guess when did you start rodney it's almost a year now i'm not crazy yeah almost a year okay. ago. So that's what i thought yeah because I, I feel like sometime last year i was like oh man i want to do a web comic and i <laughs> tried and i went too far and then i couldn't do it anymore <laughs> so it's like um now i'm doing something else and i'm keeping it so simple and trying to just focus on it being like fun and yeah. I think it's like yeah. something that's really important that's when pitching and like creating stories as well. And I'm on a couple of discords mm-hmm. and I was recently watching a conversation between a couple of people on the discord and they were talking about making video games and someone was like, I have this idea for this game and it, here's the lore and they like typed like a bunch of lore and they're like, and it's sometimes I'm like worried that I'm not going to be able to like make it and like someone chimed in and was like, make it small, make it so much smaller. This is too big. You're not going to be able to finish it. And I think 
a lot of the time that's the best advice for like creating anything that's got a story baked in it and i wonder if you guys like how do you guys come up with your pitches i know gene you talked about it a little bit like you were like that you're very lore yeah. oriented and like create those big epics but like what about you yeah let's hear from cheyenne yeah i think like a lot of the pitches that i've done like i do like i love female main characters i love mm -hmm kind of like underdogs and whimsy um so like even with my disney pilot like i made it like really really personal um i mean to an extent but like it's about like like a jewish girl like a jewish family and that's nothing like i've ever pitched before but i was like look i i, I really want to see more jewish characters in children's animation besides like I that one you were rug jewish <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was like besides that like one rug rat special um <laughs> i was like it yeah, would just be yeah 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 i was like <laughs> it would be nice to see more just like regular <laughs> kids um jewish kids so um that's like i haven't really done like i've always wanted to do like a comic um or like kind of like a continuing story and i've never really done that before like everything i've done story-wise is just like in these like show pitches because that's just kind of like what I'm the most used to and it'll be like what right. have I like I not seen mm -hmm. before and um but I oh I guess something else that I didn't mention before but like I also I signed with a book agent oh, nice. for like mm. kids books <laughs> yeah so oh, and that's been... coming up Cheyenne <laughs> no no don't say that <laughs> um that's <laughs> that's because that's definitely something I've always wanted to do it's kind of like a dream thing um so i'm working on like a, a book for that um which is like an original story and i've kind of i've been so much more scared of like writing and drawing this book than i have been of like doing any show pitch ever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and i think it's like because it's like new territory and it's like something that's like very like new and scary um but uh yeah so that's kind of again something where I, it's an idea that just made me laugh one day i was just like oh this is like a dumb thing and it made me laugh and now i'm like actually growing it into like a real story yep. um that's exactly yeah, yeah. that's so yeah, that's very relatable that's <laughs> it is very starts. scary i hear i hear <laughs> exactly what you say because it's like at first you're like that's so fun and you're like haha this would be amazing but then when it's actually you actually have to make a good story out of it you're like what the what did i get myself into? <laughs> i'm in I the am. same boat yeah oh god yeah i i also oh. like i had an idea that was like such a simple concept and everyone i pitched it to usually i have a hard time with i, I like i v was mentioning like i come up with lore and a world and, blah, and then i like i lose sight of what the hell it's about and uh i came up with this really simple like pitch not even a pitch just like a simple i guess uh log line and um and I wanted to focus on just like little vignettes, but now the deeper I go, same as with Rodney, it's like, yeah. oh, shit, there's a story here, isn't there? <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> ah, damn it, I gotta solve this now, and I'm back to where I started. But it's it's not as bad. It's um, it's a little less rigid and a little less suffocating, well, and I'm trying to not. Because when you start with vignettes, it's like you can more easily make it character driven, which is usually what yes. we're excited about when. People are like respond yes. more to like character driven stuff. Uh, I mean, like I feel like like lore heavy stuff is like usually more of a like an acquired crowd that is like like mm -hmm. that, that they need to put in yeah. the time. Like they need to invest. In but even when you look at Homestuck, it kind of just started with character. Yeah, it's like it just started with characters, and yeah. then it became the lore. Yeah. It starts with. Yeah, it starts with characters and it builds and builds. So yeah, that's no matter what. It's it's like I think a lot of people have this problem. I don't think Cheyenne, I don't think you have this problem because you're I feel like all your pictures are always character character first. Mm -hmm. But um I think it's a frequent enough thing and and we've probably said it before but like focus on characters first. Like you have to with any pitch, really any story, like you really should try to figure out the characters first and then what magic system i think it's like something that like in pedro's uh, little pitch uh youtube video that um we yes. his episode should have come out by by the time we release this one uh yeah. it's really yeah, yeah. really really cool because he explains kind of like how to actually uh like present characters in a way that um is it's not like relatable but that really fleshes them out right off the bat because for the longest time what i was doing with my characters is like 
he's the smart one and he's kind of quirky but it's like that doesn't mean anything when you hear is like a character that's smart and quirky mm-hmm. it's like give us like examples or like what are they afraid of or what motivates them it's like a whole like all of a sudden there's like a whole like different you know like aspect of them that like come comes through yeah i don't know i thought that was like really really cool how do you think about your characters shay um yeah i think like uh i don't know like something that's helped me is trying to be like okay like which character are they most mm-hmm. like from like what live action show that I like the most <laughs> um, just to like help kind of get them like a voice. Um, and then I guess like doing like a lot of like drawings and doodles of them, you know, just to kind of see like what their facial expressions would look like and posing. Um, but yeah, I guess like pulling from something real, like either from somebody I know or something personal, like my Nickelodeon thing, um, the, like the main character was based off like me and like kind of like a accumulation of like a few of my best friends for like the other character um and that helped a lot just because like i, I think a lot of pitches now the um executives want to know like why this story and why these characters and like what does that have to do with you um more so than ever so i think having like answers to all yeah. that is, is always really good that's great we got some really good questions on twitter Mm-hmm. This is kind of relating back to something we already talked about, but uh, at Crogdon asks kind of a question for V as well as Cheyenne, but how do you draw so loose and fluid? This person is more absorbed with technical accuracy than uh, than you two, and they're wondering how to incorporate more of that fluidity. Um, yeah, again, I think for me, it's like, yeah, using, like, if you can find, like, a, a pencil or something that helps loosen you up or, like, drawing with pen and something that like you can't just like erase a million times or like go over like really helps with your like line confidence I think like confidence in in lines like you could really see it in drawings like oh like how strong and forceful like your line work is and purposeful and um like I'll do a drawing like multiple times over and over again until I feel like okay like the the line is strong and it's, it's just a confident drawing and um yeah like try practicing I think drawing with pen (laughs) and uh when I did life drawing in school we did this exercise where it was like try drawing this person with like five lines or like you know like really restricting yourself yeah so you have to make like really confident bold choices and stick with them um I think that helped me like immensely just to be and also like I'm I I think this is why I also transitioned into storyboarding is like I get really bored really quickly when it's drawing mm-hmm. and like, mm-hmm. I don't want to like, and some people like are so good at like, just, you know, really like getting that line perfect and going over and over again. And I'm just like, no, it's done. It's over. <laughs> like I did the drawing next. <laughs> so just, uh, I think being in storyboard artist has helped me with that also just like quick drawings, like get the pose down, get the energy um, there. Like the silhouette has to be like really strong. Um, and if not, like scrap it, move on. <laughs> That's kind of my philosophy. <laughs> I love drawing with pen. I, that was something I discovered probably like, uh, God, 10 years ago at this point. But yeah, it's like when I was younger, I would, I would doodle with pencil and it would get all smudgy and gross, but that wasn't even the point. It was just the, the, the permanence of pen is, is nice because it, there's no room for error. And if you make an error, you just draw it again. Like it's just, they like, it really creates that like looseness um for me at least v what about you uh i actually agree with pretty much everything of what shine said because it's like i'm Mm -hmm. very much the same i have a really hard time sticking to a drawing for a long time i get bored with it pretty fast and i like the initial idea i guess you know like i like kind of playing with the like what is this drawing trying to say what am I trying to do how can I push this how can I make this more like dynamic and I enjoy looking at like dynamic uh shapes more and I think for me like sticking to fluidity comes to uh if I were to kind of make like a small list it's kind of like what Shane was saying number one is like doing a lot of life drawing I did I did a lot of life drawing like uh 
a lot <laughs> like years and years <laughs> even tell. after even after I started working I kept doing life drawing like um for two hours every week for probably like five years in then so there's that drawing with the pen and also kind of what we touched on like earlier in the episode using a pen that like kind of like a throwaway pen on like a throwaway notebook and just getting like a lot of just getting the lines down and just draw like uh not being afraid of like moving on doing a bad drawing moving on um because mm-hmm. i think a lot of it is like muscle memory and it's also like a lot of it is like automatic drawing for me it's just like i really love doodling i like doodling is a lot of fun mm-hmm. it's just like you know yes, it's you like do. oh um because you're kind of trying to surprise yourself in some way right you're like well what's a line that feels good to draw and then what can i tell with this line and then it's like what am i gonna surprise myself with with this drawing so it's kind of like a combination of all this uh i would say yeah to not overthink it overthinking a drawing for me is kind of like what's gonna kill it for me yeah Yeah, for sure same here like i'll go back to old drawings where i'm like oh i could tell i was so like incompetent (laughs) yes Mm -hmm. yes exactly exactly Mm -hmm. yeah that's really what it is yeah uh sort of related at cash cash asks how are you able to balance both boarding and character design workflows and is there an advantage to knowing both Ooh, um yeah like i would say like my main job is storyboarding and then character design is on the side um just because like i think it requires a, like less pencil mileage i guess than boarding so i i find it a lot easier to do like freelance mm-hmm. character design um and a lot mm-hmm. of it is like really fun a lot of it's like can you like explore like this character um which is the best because then it's not like like for me like rotations and stuff are like very boring Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I don't like them but when it's like explore the character then it's like yay um and sorry so the question was how do I balance both Mm -hmm. um yeah I think like it's a nice brain break to like go from character design back to storyboarding and they do kind of influence each other because like I like you know, get the confidence of like my drawing with storyboarding because you have to draw so much and so quickly. So that I think translates to character design in the sense that I get to draw like loose and fast and do like a lot of versions and not get too stuck in my own head. Um, and then for storyboarding, like just knowing like, okay, this character can't have like 8,000 buttons and buckles. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. just just knowing the pipeline, uh, starting as a character designer and being like, yeah, like I want to try and stick on model as possible. And, um, but also designing characters that again, like won't kill the board artists or like won't kill the animators um, has been very useful. Yeah. They also had a bonus question. Uh, when it comes to designing characters, what are some of your sources of inspiration? Oh, um, Hmm. I think it depends on... Oh, so it's like personal character design, not like for I think so. someone else's show. Because uh, then it's like just learn the show. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. for my own stuff, um, I don't know. I, I kind of... It's weird because when people are like, oh, like, what's your style? Like, I never feel like I have a style. But then everybody else is like, oh, you have a style. Like, we could point your drawings yeah. out. And I'm like, how? Like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm always changing how I draw, like, every yeah. couple of years. <laughs> No, you can see. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, that's like I want to have a, a style, and yet I don't. In a way, you know. <laughs> I think it's like I think that what you're describing is the like you're you're you you don't see it yourself. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's but it's perceivable for other people. Yeah, yeah, because it's like the I think it's all in the line, really, in the line and the like, yeah. you know, um, the shapes, the yeah. shapes that you like. Yeah, like very. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, like I. It, yeah, I do want people to like be able to point out a drawing of mine among lots of drawings. That would be great. But then I also don't want to be like, oh, I only draw one way. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I could do struggle. other things. I know, right? Of like having a style and yet having no style to be a chameleon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so hard, so hard. Yeah, mm. animation, baby. Yeah, it's tough to do both. Yeah, <laughs> be yeah, everything and nothing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, boy, ain't that just luck. Um, uh, at Lucky Lemon Lime asked, what resources would you recommend to anyone interested in character design? Ooh, resources, eh? Um, I guess there's like, 
it's funny because like I feel like character design for TV is a lot of like doing rotations and doing special poses and it's not so much like the fizz devy like exploring yes. I guess mm-hmm. like it it's it's kind of it's very technical so I guess like if you want to practice being like a TV character designer it would be like yeah like rotate some of your favorite cartoon characters and find rough boards online and do like a cleanup of that board on model a lot of practicing that kind of stuff but then I guess for like personal character design I I don't know (laughs) it's like just be you I guess like find what inspires you and just like like when I was younger I used to try and draw myself in like all different show styles to be like what would I look like in this show what would I look like in that show um and that was like really helpful just like it's like a fun like a project to do for yourself and then just to learn like oh I hate drawing like in the style of like amphibia like oh my god this sucks or something or like oh but I love right. like drawing myself like Powerpuff Girls you know like and that kind of helps like inform sure you know like what some you like get for really yourself. yeah some people get really into like drawing more anime adjacent some people like the more cartoony mm-hmm. thing and like there's a place for both and yeah jobs yeah, yeah. will hire for both <laughs> like there's Oh, There's yeah. plenty of opportunities now more than ever. What was it that inspired you to pursue a career as a storyboard artist and character designer? And out of all the places you worked, which of them was the most fun or open to creative ideas? If you want to answer uh, that. There, well, I guess, yeah, like I I love drawing people a lot. I think like drawing humans and humanoid people are like my favorite thing to draw ever. So naturally, I was like, I want to be a character designer. Um, and then when I started doing it for a few years, I kind of realized like oh actually I really like story and character development and um I like drawing pretty fast and loose and I I just never thought I'd be like good enough to be a storyboard artist um but then after working on a few shows and taking a few tests and seeing like what actually goes into tv storyboards uh, especially for like bridge or 6 to 11 comedy which is what I gravitate towards I was like oh I could totally do this um and you know, got the confidence and really tried to make the leap. Uh, and I've been like really happy with it. Um, like I'm, I'm really glad I jumped over to storyboard. Um, what was the second part of that question? The second part was uh, out of all the places you work, which of which was the most fun or open? Oh, um, I mean, it's funny. Like I feel like yeah, like every studio definitely feels a little different, but like. They're all so nice. I don't know. It's all it's really fun to work at all of them. They all have their different like perks and benefits. And um I think when I went to Disney and then when I went to like use my silver pass and go to Disneyland for the first time, oh. I was like, Oh my god. Like Yeah. <laughs> it felt really good. Like I felt so like I'm such a Disney girl and I was like I was like really like leaning into it. Um that was kind of like a special moment for me. Um just because it's like so magical when you're there and they're like, Where do you make your magic? And I'm like, Oh <laughs> it's like like my nerdy you know childhood self kind of uh was really feeling that but yeah um I don't know they they I like them all I like it's been really I've been really fortunate and grateful that I've gotten to like experience so many of the different studios um I think that's that's really like important like you don't have to do it in your career like some people stay at like one studio for a long time and that's really awesome too to like grow with the studio and but um, I don't know. I like also like just like meeting different people at every studio is like really cool. Yeah, I agree. I like I like jumping from a studio to another and kind of like figuring out kind of like what they're all about because they all kind of have like um, like their own kind of favorite type of like content, right? So it's kind of like oh, what are what? it's kind of like me, like kind of going to a new studios, kind of like meeting a new person too. It's like oh, what are you about? What are what are you? What are you excited to air on your network? <laughs> What's your type of stuff? You know, yeah. it's kind of yeah, totally. I did feel like I like, when I was at Cartoon Network, I felt like really cool. I gotta say, ah, ah, <laughs> I feel like Cartoon Network is like it's such a funny studio on the way that it does kind of cultivate that like yeah cool vibe. It's it's very interesting. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, like cool parties ah. and like cool things. And I just felt cool. 
It's um, the it's the hipster studio. <laughs> it really is. It really is. It's Everyone so there has like a, a shaved side of their head and thick rimmed glasses, and they're all dressed all stylish, and they shop <laughs> at Big Bud Press. And <laughs> I they're always like skateboarding. Yeah, they all skateboard and have barbecues on the roof. That's so funny. I think yeah. Uh, uh, <sighs> Cheyenne, what are your goals for the future? Hmm. That's, yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot um, recently, because especially with pandemic and being separated from everybody and stuck inside, and it makes you kind Mm -hmm. of like question your whole life. Absolutely. Um, (laughs) I do think I, in the long term, like, because, you know, getting a show is like winning the lottery several times. It's really, really, really hard to do. And I don't want to be like if i don't get a show like i'm a failure like i i want to be able to be like cool i tried it possibly didn't work out um not the end of the world i have other dreams and goals and i think it would be to like segue more into kids books and you know i know that there's like not that much money in that but just as like a creative output to be able to kind of have that going on and like maybe teach you know like i i really think it would be cool to in the future (laughs) teach one day and you know like i love working with people and helping people and i think that would just be something that brings me a lot of joy um i just don't i'm so scared of like being like 80 and being like i still didn't get that show still failure like (laughs) yeah yeah i want to be able to be like you know what i'm gonna put that to rest it's fine uh (laughs) and uh find fulfillment in other areas (laughs) yeah I've tried to shift my thinking more to like, I want to find an audience and Mm -hmm. be able to tell my my stuff than have a show because you can control one, but you can't control the other. Like that, I think that's, it's a tough, and you know, we share that goal and it's like exhausting too when you keep trying and, and, uh, keep getting pushback or getting rejected or whatever. And it's just, so it's just like, I, I've had to reshift my, my thinking a little bit um, away from like, I want a show. Because mm-hmm. if it happens, great. But it's there's no way to control that. Like, yeah. you, it's you so out of our hands. Happen. Yeah. It's so out of it's, our hands. Yeah. It's not like you worked hard and you had a good heart. So it's like, no, like your pitch had the color green in it. And now we don't like green yeah. anymore. And there's a new exec. So. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think people fully know. People that haven't gone through that process, even people in the industry, they don't fully wrap their heads around it. And I didn't. And uh, yeah, it is it is nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your with the quality of the show or the work or anything. And it's like, and everyone will ask like, well, why didn't this get greenlit? And it's like, dude, I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, Nobody knows. I don't, I don't even have an answer for it. Like I, they didn't give me an answer. It, it's just like, you just don't know. And, uh, and that's part of the, the pain of it too, is that it's like, man, at least I, if I knew I could like pivot, but when, when there's just no solid explanation, it's just like, well, what the fuck did I like? So yeah, yeah. I think it's just, it's, it's a tough goal to pursue. Yeah, it's like I want like a bit more like control and like autonomy over my life and everything and over my dreams. And I feel like, um, yeah, like just doing something creative or giving back yeah. in a way that like I feel like I have control over um, instead yeah. of like this million dollar studio. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's something I'm like craving yeah. in my life is yeah. like a bit more control. Yeah, that's a good thing, though. To shoot for well uh you've plugged your website cheyennecurtis.com is there anything else you want to plug while you're on the show um you can mm-hmm. check out my twitter sometimes i tweet uh sometimes i post drawings <laughs> it's i think sometimes. it's just cheyenne underscore curtis and then my instagram which sometimes <laughs> i do post drawings um sometimes i do stories <laughs> about my dog uh, i think that's also just like cheyenne curtis <laughs> yeah everything's just my name pretty easy it's to a good find name me. Ah, yeah it's all right it's a unique name awesome well that's the end of this creative block thanks to cheyenne for being our guest and sharing her story and thanks for your listeners follow us on twitter it's at creative block creative without the vowel where we ask for drunk prompts and questions to ask our guests huge thanks to my sister clemens for editing the podcast if you love our show then support us on patreon Becoming a patron gets you early access to interviews as well as bonus episodes click the link in the description of this episode i've been your host gene 
And I was V, keeping creative, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.